It's profile time, Yay. ladies and gentlemen. Come on. And <laughs> who else? We, we, we've got no option. But it's, it's Craig Brown. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's Michael James Owen. Wow. Um, well done, he's 33. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's happened, isn't it? He's, he's decided... Yeah. Enough's enough. Enough's yeah. enough yeah. at the end of the season for mm. Michael Owen, who's going to retire. Yeah. But it is it is quite nice that people have been remembering his career, which was pretty something. Yeah. yeah. Now, it's if been you... absolutely tiresome seeing so many people tweet, oh, yeah, it's been over for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's been all day, has it? It's been all yeah. day. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got, I mean, I want to obviously we want to celebrate Michael Owen. I'm sure we're going to do that. But just to put it in perspective, I've got five Michael Owen moments. Any, we, if you just have one of them in your career, you'd be happy. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So give him a little bit of credit. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That, that said, though, if you, if any listeners want to wind back to the Keegan profile, <laughs> it's just, so to put my um, yeah. horrific performance in this one in context. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Yeah. Fine, Pete. Um, he was born on the fourteenth of December, nineteen seventy-nine. Just twelve years and a wee bit. Yeah. After the summer of love. Twelve years after. You don't get many after the summer of love. Oh, you do not. Not in this bad boy. One of the finest poachers England has ever produced. Mm. But more than that. Mm. More than that, Jim. Certainly one also, of an excellent racehorse owner. Yeah, mm. that's mm. very true. Mm. Um, uh, when he was uh, just a tiny little chap, he broke many scoring records throughout his, his playing days uh, as a kid and was destined for the big time. I think that was quite evident in his career well, not even in his career when he was young like, he was just that kid that everyone thought yeah he's going to be brilliant but the great <laughs> thing was he turned out to be yeah, mm, that one. he yeah. was one of those kids that scored ludicrous amount of goals didn't he break Ian Rush's um, record for was it the same club or in the same it's league like, it was like a like hundred goals in 30 yeah, he, games yeah, he beat yeah. it by about 25 goals in a season <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous he played for England schoolboys um, and bagged 12 goals in 8 games for the under 15s beating Kevin Gallon and Nick Barmby's record <laughs> Kevin Gallant. Um, he scored for England schoolboys a goal against Scotland schoolboys. I think at St James's Park, and it's absolutely incredible. They, I think England just needed to draw to win the the, the league and uh, the, like the round robin tournament mm. they play, whatever it is. Mm. And Scotland obviously needed to win. And Scotland went um, two one ahead. And oh, do you know who scored? Anyone? Any nineties favourites? Do you know what? I actually do know who scored because he <laughs> was uh, the brother of a guy I used to play with. Was it Phil Kerr? His surname was Paul <laughs> Porteous. Okay. Um, and uh, he, he scored to put Scotland 2 1 up. And then Owen, whoever it was, talking about this later, said, Michael just said, Give me the ball. Yeah. And he ran from the halfway line and did them all. And oh. like he's, he's Roy the Rover's stuff. Yeah. Right. Absolutely incredible. Um, he must be like the f like he was, for me when he first started. He was quicker than any other footballer on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. it was just kind of like I, I don't know. It was ridiculous. He was, imagine how quick would've he would have been like at schoolboy level. Like just doing everyone. It was, it, Not even it, thinking about what his feet's doing. He uh, attended the FA School of Excellence um, at Lillyshaw. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, in 1996, he won the FA Youth Cup with Liverpool and signed uh, professional terms with the Reds. He yeah, was in their youth setup. I heard loads of team players were out, sorry, clubs were after him, but didn't the Liverpool um, the Liverpool loads of players were after him, Luke? Yeah, they were, on yeah. the pitch. Mm. Apparently, Liverpool sort of director of development, I forget what it was, actually wrote his parents like a personal letter and said, yeah. you know, we'd really like him here. And apparently, Owen was made up, with it and that's why he signed for it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So just a little touch. Nice touch. Yeah, little yeah. Touch. like the old Brian Clough. Go around their house, stay there all night, <laughs> <laughs> stay yeah. overnight, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh come on. Yeah, yeah. I'll be your best friend. <laughs> yeah. I'll start drinking. <laughs> <if you don't laughs> let me. That's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> you can have happy Cluffy or you can have smash shit up Cluffy yeah. <laughs> have you heard my Frank Sinatra impression that is really oh. disrespectful I'm, I'm afraid I mean, it's, it's, if it's Keegan it's fine yeah, yeah. just wait <laughs> okay, <right. laughs> anyway many of the players and coaches that's stuff. fucking rageous <laughs> <laughs> I have a very distinct, um, unique got, set of you, skills, Marcus Speller. You joined in I with Keegan last you. time. Yeah. Well, not last time, it was the last time you were here. I was the one, Pete. You know. Anyway, but with Michael nice. Owen, Michael Owen. Many of the players and coaching staff um, at Liverpool were, were really excited about this teenage prodigy. Again, even when he signed for the club, they all knew about him and just said he was mm. brilliant. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. He got his first taste of uh, first team football away to Wimbledon. Now, need, Liverpool needed a win to stay in the title race, and they lost 2 1 at Selhurst Park. Owen came on and scored that goal. Now, even though Liverpool fans would have been a bit deflated, obviously, that they'd um, lost out on another title, I mean, they weren't really going to win it even if they won that game, they got a little um, show of Michael Owen, and, and I think that was a, a kind of a consolation in, in, in amidst that, that moment to see a guy who you thought, blimey, 
he could kick on and really do something. It's a great example of of how much, or how sorry, how much they the clubs and owners and stuff underestimate how much fans love local players. Yeah, they massively overrun the transfer market. And if a player comes in and they buy him for decent money, or even if they come in for not decent money, fans are much more likely to get impatient with that player. If someone comes through the, the youth system, they get so much but more it's freedom. them on the pitch. Exactly, they love it. representative. And I don't know why, over and over again, teams at all levels just work on bringing players in from all over the place when they could just use their own catchment areas. Yeah. Well, it yeah. all depends on the talent available to them, though, doesn't it? I suppose so, but I mean, the reason I bring it up is because obviously Portsmouth are going through the mill at the moment, and they've had so much money go through the club, and they've not really got any sort of academy to speak of, and their catchment area is massive. Mm. I was going to say Liverpool. Mm. Yeah. You think how many people love football around that area? Surely they've got a huge catchment area. Mm. And a club like Liverpool always going to... So it's not surprising. I mean, I know, I know Liverpool fans didn't really take to Owen the same way they took to Fowler, but I mean, they were obviously excited when he first came through because he's yeah. such a great talent. Mm. But he was, he was just as, as an England fan as, as well, though. He was an incredibly exciting player. And he looks so young as well, which yeah, made me think, wow, this is amazing. He's yeah. like a wonder kid. <laughs> it's, it's like a kid from your school. Yeah. Um, and it came, became more and more evident that Owen was um, going to develop into a quality player. In his first full season at Liverpool, he pretty much replaced Robbie Fowler, didn't he, as a number one striker. Mm. Mm. Elbowed him out of the team a bit. Um, made his debut for England under 21s that same season. Only made one appearance in which he scored in, as he moved up to the senior side very quickly. Did he got like 18 league goals in the season that he was like 18 and 19, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He yeah just he hit the ground running twice in a row. Yeah, he yeah. um uh he he finished joint top scorer in the league with Dion Dublin and Chris Sutton. <laughs> yeah, like and he was voted eight, PFA eight, Young Player of the Year, came third in PFA Player of the Year. 23 mm. goals in his first season at mm-hmm. Liverpool. He never got 20 league goals in a season. No, no, he didn't. That's right. Um, and uh, he scored. He, sorry, he, his first cap for England came against Chile uh, at the age of 18 years and 58 days, and he was the youngest England player of last century. I remember that game. Was that the game that Salas and Zamorano sort of pulled England around? I think that might have and been beat the him one. at Wembley. 2 0. Was it yeah. Salas scored 2 goals? You think he might have? Yeah. Might have yeah. been that one. Um, yeah, slightly overshadowed. But a few days later, he scored his first hat trick in, in England's top flight away at Sheffield Wednesday. So um, that summer, it was 1998, and it was, uh, it was England going to France to participate in the World Cup. And England had a great strike partnership going into that World Cup. That, that, you can't underestimate that. Shear and Sheringham were superb. The SAS. Yeah. 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 Um, they were great in Euro 96 and in the qualification to the World Cup. They, they were superb. So Owen started the tournament um, as a substitute, obviously, on the bench. And he was one of those genuine players that, that um, we hoped Theo Walcott might be in 2006. Yeah. And, yeah. I and to really a degree, Wayne Rooney as well. Yeah. Well, Rooney sort of was, wasn't he? Yeah. The, I, think, the, well, I think Owen even more so, though. No, Owen more so, because he was on the bench. Yeah. And everyone was looking at him going... <sighs> yeah, but because he scored in a friendly leading up to the tournament. He scored against Morocco, didn't he, in a friendly... Mm-hmm. And then, and then he was chucked in there. Yeah, I think the difference is that we all wanted Owen to do something special, and then he pretty much immediately did. Yeah, so just can, yeah in hindsight, we, we can all say this. Well, it's like, oh, we all wanted this, didn't we? But yeah. like, you know, every, for every one of him, there's like you know a million other yeah. footballers of his age. Mm. But he came off the bench against Romania and scored, didn't he? I think he? he scored. I think he came off the bench against Tunisia in the first game briefly, but of course it was against Romania. England were one nil down, and just weren't getting the breakthrough. And Owen came on and it just changed everything. I mean, it was such excitement. I don't think a player coming on for England in recent years has had such an impact. One in, of the in most the minds explosive psyche performances in, yeah. of England in that tournament. He, just, he, he hit the post as well, didn't he? Well, he, England won 0 down and he came on and got the equaliser. It was just glorious. I mean, it was mm. like he'd won the game. Yeah. The way And suddenly the belief that went around that England team and the fans. Because he was which enabled us to lose 2-1. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he was an unknown, unknown quantity against opposition as well, which is exactly. really exciting things. Yeah, which is which is kind of a rarity nowadays in the, in the World Cup, unless it's one of the, the kind of lesser known teams. But even then, you're going to have so many researchers at the Exactly, there, so yeah, many, exactly, so much footage. Exactly. You know. But I mean, even even when uh, Dan Petrescu got the winner, Owen still went up the other end and hit the post. You know, yeah, it was yeah. still agonising. He started against Colombia. Now he broke up that partnership, Shearer and Sheringham, mm. and uh, Hoddle thought I've got to put him in. Um, didn't score against Colombia. And then uh, England played Argentina in the second round. And my goodness, what an impact! It was about three goals in the first fifteen minutes. Wasn't there it? was. And his one was in the fifteenth or sixteenth minute or something. Yeah, I mean, mm. he, he he obviously went down and, and got England a penalty. I mean, was it a dive? Was it? Yes, it was a dive. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, then that's scored. what was most you know he's most remembered for in that game. No, which is why why moment. It's why I don't acknowledge his goal, Jim. <laughs> Not acceptable. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it was. You know, you could argue that um, who was it? Who was it? That went was down it Pochettino? The, might have even been Pochettino. Who went down for the, the Argentina penalty? Oh, was it Simeone? Or Not sure. Or Not whoever sure. Whoever it was. 
that was a bit of a leave your leg in kind yeah. of job simulation only but yeah. anyway we don't like any <laughs> diving or anything but oh, you've done in there Jim but he was he was running the Argentinian defence all over the shop and scored one of the best goals England has, individual goals England have ever scored at a major tournament the best the pastor scores yeah <laughs> goals was ready there he yeah, was ready so scores had more of a sight of that goal than he did he'd have been there getting sunburned all day <laughs> It's the least Owen could have done. I think it was outrageous when Owen scored that goal. Everyone was watching it, going, oh, "An Englishman!" Yeah, you yeah. know, it was it was absolutely outrageous. It was that wasn't final it? drop of the shoulder that takes him wide, and then just, yeah. just everyone was got whole match. skulls that's coming in, decides yeah. to just drop off and watch. And yeah, it's just, yeah. Bah. Yeah. Well, he, go, he goes past. He goes past. It's the reason it's a great goal as well is because he goes Ayala. past. He goes past Shamo, yeah. who's wearing number three. He sidesteps Ayala, who was some player there. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. He was wearing number two, mm. and they clicked it past Rowe, who's wearing number one. So it's like a three-two-one goal. Yeah. yeah. Countdown <laughs> to a goal in your face, Argentina. <laughs> yes, you will beat us on penalties, but we're having this. <laughs> it's a lovely goal. And, and the, the other thing I, I, I can remember from the game is just a build-up of expectation for the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Quite stifling heat. It was a warm day, and 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 the pressure was unbearable and for someone that young. Yeah. To just play. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I'm not exaggerating to say if we all went down Regis Park on a Sunday like we sometimes do, and someone scored a goal like that, you'd be like, "Wow, great yeah, goal!" Yeah. You know, to do it in that occasion at that age in that sort of pressure is amazing, and it should never be understated. There's a lot of revisionism that goes on about that goal. I've seen people who've gone back and looked at it and said, "Oh, it's, you know, is, is it really that much to shout about?" Yes, it is. It's a brilliant yeah. goal, mm. and he should be given an immense amount of credit for yeah, it. Great finish as well oh yeah. superb but but also though that um, th- <sighs> that type of game that type of, of of England performance and all okay England went out on penalties glorious failure again you just don't really get that anymore 2010 no. yeah. 2006 yeah. well that's the thing isn't it it used to be that you do I mean so much happened in that game it feels like about nine different games at once it yeah. just had, it, there was so much drama in it and it used to be yeah we sort of would go out and we'd make the excuse so at least we fought and we really really made it a battle but what we did back then we just don't do it now no, and it's, I know. It's, um, <laughs> it was it was incredibly I almost missed that glorious failure yeah, yeah. it was incredibly exciting I remember exactly where I was at Chir- I was in Churchill's on uh, Park Road in Hartlepool mm. and it was a really wild day and we all took the day off um, well they yeah. off college and stuff yeah yeah, oh, yeah I watched it in the pub it. I watched it in the pub in, in my hometown yeah it was great great atmosphere it was brilliant oh yeah um, England of course went out um, uh, as we said um, then uh, Michael Owen returned to Liverpool and, and, and started tearing up the Premier League did, do you remember the, like, the first okay. few games of that season he was applauded by opposition fans when he yeah. came on oh yeah he yeah like, he, was, like, he was loved by like a lot of people at that point yeah absolutely well, because I mean well, if you look at it for all of us he has given us one of our most precious football memories <laughs> yeah. ever. Yeah. Very few things are ever going to top that. That's right. And and uh, one of um, I'd imagine uh, my favourite memories, or a lot of people's favourite memories of, of Michael Owen, was the hat trick away at Newcastle, straight off, off the bat of the World Cup. And he came back to Liverpool and was that player. And, mm. and that hat trick he scored. In in the first half, I mean the, the the first one, second one, and then when the third one went in, he he roasted a couple of the defenders. or well, got slightly lucky with the bounce. Glorious finish, and you just thought, my goodness, we've got a world beater. This guy is a, is a superstar. He yeah. can t- he can take on anybody. Mm. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. He looked unbelievable, um, and he finished um, winning the Golden Boot again um, in in ninety eight ninety nine. And he's only one of five Premier League players who have won more than one Premier League Golden Boot award. Uh, Shearer, Hasselbank, Henri, and Drogba. Was he European Fine company. Year once, was he? 2001, yeah, a couple mate. Couple of years later, a couple yeah. of years later, yeah. Um, and also, at the end of um, that season, he got a bit of a hamstring injury in April. So I don't believe it. <laughs> and it was a that, sign of... That man was too fast for his own hamstrings. Yeah. A chilling That's, portent is, of what was to come. <laughs> you know, that is genuinely the case, though. Obviously, he was you know, just zipping up and down so much when he was younger. He must have just done himself some long-term yeah. damage. I can, I can remember... Um, I spoke to, to an ex-pro about it, and they said to me that... When you're that age, you don't want to not play. You never want yeah, to not of course. play. So it's easy to say that he was mismanaged as a young player. But for all you know, the coaching staff could have been saying, we don't want you to play. And he could have been so insistent that he wanted to play. Yeah. And they're under so much pressure for his goals that he just carried on yeah. playing and, and the playing. The hype playing. around him as well, the buzz around him would have made it, you know, you can't leave him out, you know. Mm. So it's difficult because he was obviously had a lot of growing to do because people yeah. grow at different ages, and and and, and I think mm. the only criticism you could level at him is that he didn't really adapt his game. I mean, arguably he didn't he did to a degree. He didn't get a chance to be made because he was out for so long and so often. But I don't think he did anywhere near. I mean, if you look at, I'm not saying he's a better player. That Defoe's a better player than him. But you look at the way Jermaine Defoe's had to adapt his game because of the way the tactics have gone. But Owen's never really done that. I think the poaching side of Owen's game came out a lot more as his pace went. He bulked up a lot, and you know, but he, he wasn't he, scoring as many goals as, as he, he was. He, his ratio was still pretty good. Mm. 
but um, big but he's, we'll come on to his time at Madrid and that'll you know be born out but yeah. sorry Pete he was, he was always like one and two until he you know until he left Madrid wasn't it but like I think everyone sort of thought that everyone sort of said for some reason that he was always going to move into midfield mm. like a couple of his a couple of his uh, old managers sort of said you know he'll get to about 30 and then we'll think yeah. Keegan playing like a number well, 10 we, we, we'll move on to that we've yeah, got a lot to talk about before then and it, you know he had that hamstring injury at the end of that season then in the next season got a few and that's like we were saying all the injuries started to come and he went to the Euros though in 2000 scored against um, Romania I think it was um, but England didn't have a good tournament and um, they were out in the first round much better year in 2001 though he won the European Player of the Year which was the old Ballon d'Or before they um, merged it and he's the last Englishman to have won that award mm. as well 2000-2001 yeah. uh, season uh, he won three trophies at Liverpool League Cup uh, and uh, UEFA Cup when they clinched uh, the, the win against Alvarez in no Alaves Alaves sorry in, uh, was it 5-4 5-4 five, four, five, four in yeah. the final yeah Crazy um, game, that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, one of Owen's finest moments in that tournament was scoring a double away at Roma in the quarters. It was lovely scenes. Um, and his best double that year was saved for the FA Cup final, Jim, against Arsenal. Wow. He, he mm. won that cup single hand. Arsenal thought really, that. really did. Arsenal, Arsenal thought they had that one, didn't they? Arsenal yeah, were 1 0 up. And were, yeah, they were. Uh, wasn't there an on show hand ball as well which should have been given that wasn't given? Oh, possibly. Yeah, and, and then and then um, the, the first goal, he just, it was a poacher's goal, wasn't it? And the second mm. goal, Berger played that nice ball over the Two top. Two goals in six minutes? Or yeah, he like rinsed that. him. Yeah, absolutely performing. rinsed him. Yeah, yeah out muscled uh, Lee Dixon and out foxed. David Seaman. And Tony Adams. Went past Tony Adams as well. Yeah, it was a lovely Not goal. Not easy. And then a few months later, in Germany, England beat Germany 5-1 Oh god that, Michael, I remember that night Michael so well Michael Owen scored a hat-trick In a game for England Away at Germany yeah. During a World Cup qualifier I remember Ridiculous watching that with, seasons, <laughs> And England about the last laugh yeah, <laughs> in, in the celebrations of the fifth goal Which was Emil Heskey's I believe yeah, yeah. I remember a mate of mine going Oh my god Go on score if you want Germany We've got five Nice bit of Was your mate Jonathan Pierce? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was hanging around with kids Like it was weird Yeah <laughs> Great stuff wasn't it? Just it was a weak Germany team it was, but it you was can, five one. You can say all you want, uh, and uh, and the, there are a few little valid points in there. But yeah. he scored a hat trick. Who was it? Who said it never heard of Stephen Gerrard. Was that that game? Oh, was that not? Was it not Effenberg? Who said I that? think that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably would be Effenberg. Yeah, that yeah. that was a great occasion because Germany went one 0 up very early on, and everyone just thought, oh, no. and England really needed a win in that game. A draw yeah. would have would have been a much better result for Germany. The way it was. It just kept on happening. I just yeah, remember going, it's like watching like five car crashes, but, we, but good car crashes. Yeah, going, but, fuck! It just keeps happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, England, England's equalised through Owen, and, and it was, there was an air of it's on. Yeah. And then Gerard scored a beauty mm. just before half time and celebrated. And everyone was just like, "This is <laughs> this is gonna bloody happen." Yeah, I can remember Owen's hat trick. Or he didn't even really celebrate it. Yeah. He was just yeah. like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's the hat trick." Yeah. yeah. He, at this point, he's accepted this is a dream. And yeah. He's just getting on with it. Well, I was thought it was because he used to play for Germany. He didn't want to celebrate against him. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great chart of 5 1, even Heskey score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, we don't care about your World Cup wins. Yeah. <laughs> we don't <laughs> care if you're in a much better situation now and have yeah. been for years and will yeah. be for years. We, at least we had a moment. <laughs> um, and uh, But during that World Cup qualification campaign for, for 2002. England did lean on Owen and Beckham a lot with the, oh, two, with God, the two of them. For a long time, they just did everything for England. Yeah, I, Owen was top scorer in the group, and Beckham got a few as well, I think. But for, you know, crucial contributions and obviously important goals. Those two were so vital for England. Um, and they went to Japan and South Korea 2002 with you know under under Svenigans. Mm -hmm. And uh, Owen scored against Denmark and Brazil in that tournament when England went out in the quarterfinal stage and really. I don't think England will get another chance, another great chance wow, to win a World Cup. Of course, they won't. No, definitely not. Brazil down to ten men, and mm. you know Turkey in the semi-final. Yeah. Germany would have been in the final. Already beaten them five-one. Yeah, exactly. He's the scored, most he scored against Brazil, didn't he? He, he uh, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I, most, remember, I remember it was like eight, shocking eight in the morning or something. Seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, so yeah. early on. Yeah, <laughs> terrible mistake from Lucy. You know, the um, terrible way to start your day <laughs> as an Englishman. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> the most. I think I remember drinking the, the slowest pint I've ever drunk <laughs> from like six forty. I think I still had it after the game because <laughs> I just didn't want it yeah. um, but I can remember um, being the most annoyed I've been with Sven just for, yeah. I mean, yeah. so England couldn't keep up with the ball they had no idea they, they were, were scared them. he didn't give many sort of uh, guidance at all in my view and, yeah. uh, and that, was, that was really disappointing yeah fucking semen <laughs> yeah and semen yeah. he cried had a little cry didn't he yeah. Danny Mills yeah Danny and England's Mills. rose Danny Mills got Ronaldinho sent off good lad <laughs> <laughs> England's Danny's rose, rose. And that's why he'll be Sir Danny Mills uh, <laughs> but back, uh, back in England it was the 2002-2003 <laughs> season started 
Um, uh, not while the World Cup was going on, that would be ludicrous. No. Um, and uh, Owen, he scored in the final of the League Cup when Liverpool beat Manchester United 2 0. He scored his 100th Premier League goal that season as well. Um, and uh, then the following season he suffered an ankle injury which kept him out for months and the injuries really came on um, mm. quite thick and fast there he did manage to come back and score a few goals taking his tally to 150 for Liverpool but it would be his last proper season for the club before joining Real Madrid and I think at Liverpool every season um, full season he was their um, top goal scorer until uh, he left the realm for Real Madrid yeah I think as well there seemed to be a lot of reluctance to leave on Owen's part I don't know if I'm sort of misremembering this but it seemed like Benitez came in and just wasn't just wasn't interested yeah there was a bit of confusion I think I can remember later on Liverpool fans saying where were you in Istanbul to yeah Owen? and he was on yeah. Like, Real Madrid yeah, yeah. well yeah <laughs> I mean busy. it was quite weird how they won the, the Champions League when Owen left mm. yeah, yeah. Um, Owen played at the Euros in Portugal 2004 he only got one goal against oh, the Hoats that's one of the most underrated goals I've ever seen it's a lovely one people rarely mention it it was this incredible like swivelled karate kick like yeah. really early on and it was one of those kind of worrying goals as well because it was so early you yeah, think oh yeah. here we go there's plenty of time for us to yeah. balls this Giro, up now Euro 96 71 yeah, we've seen this before <laughs> yeah. and so it proved um, yeah but he became the only England player to have scored in four major tournaments when he scored that goal not bad mm. not bad at all um, and then he went to Madrid and he played for one um, year at Madrid took him a while to get going well it was well. trying to budge Raul and Ronaldo from their starting positions um, mm. up front <sighs> it was always going to be a tall order the goal in the Classico was a beauty yeah. when Real Madrid just went Classic mad going. They, they went mad and just played like four strikers yeah. and um, Owen picked up a David Beckham boy over the top David Beckham and to Owen for oh. Real Madrid and the finish Beautiful. he just smashed it through Valdez he yeah. Yeah. hit it so hard that Valdez couldn't even react was it Valdez in goal? yeah Valdez I think it might have been one of his first Seasons, okay. but it's definitely but we, we, we always like a, an Englishman who goes to Spain or, yeah. or France or something. Of course, got like that. Was his, McMahon his, his there at the time too? I think he would have been. Just about. Who knows? Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. But um, yeah, he, I mean, he did okay in Madrid. Obviously, I'm sure people are aware that he finished the season with something like the best minutes to goals ratio in the league yeah um, he became a sort of <laughs> a, a bit of a favourite though because the fans were ch regularly chanting for him because well, they too were aware of that. he didn't start too well but he but he, he got going he scored the only goal in a, in a win against Dynamo Kiev in the Champions yeah. League I think and, and the, the goal against um, Barcelona the Classico and he, he just looked likely to score I think that Raul wasn't playing that well yeah. at the time I think he actually had more goals than starts overall for Madrid wow so a lot of his it's very close. Of no, I, th I think yeah, I think it's slightly more yeah, team, was it in forty-two matches, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was fifteen starts. I don't know. Yeah, I but, don't remember that. But he did. But he did okay. But he uh, unfortunately went at a time when Raúl and Ronaldo, yeah, yeah. Were, were in their pomp and, and <laughs> up front. You know, <laughs> you're not the greatest footballers who ever lived. Yeah, <laughs> hard to use up. Yeah, but uh, but after that year, he came back to England, signing for Newcastle United. Sixteen point eight mil, Pete. So oh, Pete, do you remember? Were you excited about that at the time? Were you yeah, well, yeah Were you one of the 20,000 that went to see him? For ages <laughs> and a million pounds for every hamstring strain? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a man who... He just, you know... He, he, was always a, he was always a player with a quiet arrogance, a quiet ego. Do you think? Yes. Of course he was, of course he was. <laughs> he was one of the most arrogant players you've ever, you, you're ever likely to come when across. Not, not but when you, when, you, when you get such... But when you, you know, say that, though, a lot of people say that they, they, they really like him and enjoy yeah, working with him and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it seems a good sort to me. Who who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're never going to meet in him. In his first season, he generally scored when he played. I remember he, yeah, he, he didn't he, play he, that he, much. Again, again, he, he, again, he just couldn't stay fit. And in more than more than that, he sort of he sort of has this kind of like weird kind of opinion about his time at Newcastle. But all I remember of him at Newcastle is he just spent all of his time wanting to play for England. He'd yeah, rather play yeah. for England than Newcastle, which you know, <clears throat> fair though, is when you know you you mm. you want to break records as, as an England footballer, but. You know, if you're not if you're not putting in performances for you for your, um, I think Newcastle New kind of was the beginning bit. of the end for us. Oh, it was like oh, he was course. playing for England, but it was on loan at Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, or just training yeah. with them. Yeah, yeah, doing the odd match. I mean, he got injured straight away after signing for them. Um, at yeah. that unveiling, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> stubbed his toe quite badly <laughs> on one of the steps. He got a hat trick away at West Ham. He I think he even off. a let's, let's skip over the Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sven gambled on him, took him to the World Cup in Germany, um, which would end in disaster for Owen. He yeah. um, damaged his cruciate knee ligament. Mm. Um, no yeah, I remember that. No one around him just yeah. collapsed on the pitch. Yeah, against he? Sweden. Two you remember in. his face just sort of going because he was still he was <laughs> Newcastle's out. Oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seen the big picture there, Pete. Yes, yeah. 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 Well, he did. Yeah. He did score a double for England against Argentina in a pre World Cup <laughs> friendly in Geneva. Geneva. Yeah. That amazing game. Yeah, that yeah felt I remember like that. A, like a World Cup game. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Best friendly I've ever seen. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> it was the scourge of Argentina. Yeah. yeah. 
In 2002, he had a little tree. If he was from any other country, that'd be his nickname as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Owen-y right. is probably what we call him. <laughs> not really the scourge because they've done all right. I mean, they they, they went through it in 1998. Uh, not in 2002. No, true. Fair enough. Um, anyway, by the, by the time the 0607 season was finished, Owen had barely played for Newcastle, and, and, and you know, fans were getting a little unsympathetic towards him. Um, he did score an England duty around this time uh, against Estonia, breaking Gary Lineker's record for the most competitive goal scored for England. Mm. Which is a, a, a record he yeah, still holds. Yeah. Mm. Um, and in 2007, he scored goals against Israel and Russia at home. The latter uh, would be his last goals for England, taking him to the 40 mark. And he finished up with 89 international caps with 40 goals. It looked absolutely nailed on for yeah. a long time that he would become England's all time top scorer. Yeah. It was Agreed. almost you just assumed he would. Agreed. And I think he assumed he would as well. And yeah. That's why he's so disappointed about it. Mm. Um, and you said earlier, um, I think it was you, uh, Pete, under Kevin Keegan, as his mensch, um, he did play Owen in a more attacking midfield. That role. was me, I said that. Actually. Right, yeah, for Doesn't Newcastle. Yeah. Doesn't matter, mate. Which kind of it worked a couple of, it wasn't um, a dreadful idea. Owen did okay in that role, but unfortunately just couldn't stay fit, really, mm. for, for Newcastle. Um, and then the summer of 2009, Alex Ferguson quite amazingly signed in for Manchester United. That was mental. Mm. He was, wasn't he off? I don't, I don't think it was mental because he, he was a free. He was a, he was a free. Yeah, he was on his way to. Surprising. Was he not on his way to Hull City? But Ferguson's right. a big fan of getting experienced players into help yeah. young players, isn't he? And it was no no gamblers. And he'd really. always wanted Owen, didn't he? Even when he was at Newcastle, he wanted to prize him from them. But and I think it was. Yeah. A, oh, sorry, not Newcastle, but Liverpool. It was a bit. I think it was a bit of a pay as you play involved as well. So yeah. it wasn't too much of a gamble. I mean, it, I mean, he was he, it, largely disappointed. Ironically, that, that stand. Yeah, that standout goal against. City when yeah. Hugh, Mark Hughes was just the most broken <laughs> man I've ever seen <laughs> Mark Hughes had already gone mad at Bellamy's equaliser Great, yeah. at Old Trafford and was giving it the big lick <laughs> yeah. and then Owen pops up and scores and Hugh, you just see the bloke with everything taken out of him yeah. he was just like a shell yeah. on the on the sideline didn't he work it out as well yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop but yeah, yeah, broke both his arms didn't he work it out it was like a tenth of a second after the, sort of yeah. the, the game should have like ended yeah. like that, yeah. <laughs> well it was one of his um, highlights other highlights of course the championship Champions League hat trick away at Wolfsburg and mm. the goal in the League Cup final win against Aston Villa. Mm. Yeah, he's got a couple of good, 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 decent goals for. Uh, but that that um, yeah. and that, he got a Premier League winners, you know, medal, which yeah. was great. That goal against City, though, that was just. I mean, Bellamy's goal was the better goal, but the Owen yeah. goal was just so ridiculous. Yeah. I remember just <laughs> what a game and looking at Mark Hughes just being like, my god, <laughs> <laughs> he's at Old Trafford, the game, the, the team yeah, he played yeah, up yeah. for so long, he's given it the licks, yeah. and he's just been absolutely <laughs> done. It was, it was yeah. sickening to see. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> and obviously in the summer last summer 2012 signed for Stoke City scored fairly recently against Swansea to take him up to the 150 Premier League goals tally which is which is nice I think it's good that mm. he got there and he's joined 7th on the list of the all time Premier League top goal scorers um, at the same place with uh, Sir Les Ferdinand Sir Les are you fancying maybe get one or two more before the season finishes Possibly. perhaps Knock him I hope so. above. Let's yeah. hope he gets the third <laughs> yeah. But both Newcastle Top legends, I think, in the group. And he, re- he announced his retirement at the end of the season um, this week. Um, I- I'm going to end with a couple of quotes. Firstly, from Sven. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Well. He said, first of all, he's a fantastic man and professional. You never had any problems with Michael Owen on the pitch or off the pitch. He's always very professional in every way. And you knew if you had him in your team, he's a danger and can score the winning goal. That's a fair point. Yeah. Oh, there's still mental tabloid hacks now saying, get him in, get him in <laughs> yeah, the squad, yeah, he's yeah. for a goal. Yeah. Hasn't played for England for five years. The only problem with Michael Owen was his injuries. He's been unlucky because he couldn't work as hard as he wanted and missed too many games. That's a pity for him, a pity for England, and a pity for the clubs he played for, and a pity for football. Hmm. And it was, I think it was. But Owen, he gave a nice statement on the, on his uh, website recently. Yeah, I saw that, it was good. And I think he, you know, he said now he's, he feels it's the right time to bring his career down. He said, I've been very fortunate in that um, my career has taken me on a journey that uh, like many young players started out I could have only dreamt of and it's true you know when when you read back about his um you know childhood playing days and then and becoming um a liverpool player he he i suppose he i mean he did fulfill that i think we wanted him to go on and you know maybe even win a tournament dare i say with yeah. england and, uh, and, uh, and Liverpool fans would have wanted him to win a Premier League winner's medal with them so in uh, one he sense, made that look possible as well yeah. exactly yeah and uh, was he in the was he in the uh, Le Tourois, um squad <laughs> um, I can Lillard remember Shearer and Ian Wright and Sheringham I'm no, not Lillard, sure if he was there yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. anyway it wouldn't count yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right but you know what a career and uh, and it's great to remember some of the moments because he was a fantastic player for England for Liverpool and for Newcastle United as well. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Stoke Mac- well, Mac- yeah. Michael Owen comes into the team with that Hall of Fame <laughs> slow clap there yeah